Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well. And today we'll be talking about Spider Man No Way Home and just how much money Disney can expect to receive from this Sony film. That's right, I said a Sony film because there are a bunch of MCU shills and stands who, for some reason, cannot get it through their heads that the film that, or rather, the studio that spends the most money on the product and not only spends the most money on the product as far as the production goes, but also also is the distributor of said product is therefore by extension the owner of that property or at least the largest stakeholder of that property and so there is indeed much accuracy to say this is a sony prediction or a Sony picture with MCU backing, with Marvel, Disney backing, and I'll dive into the numbers as have been reported and what that likely means for Disney's bottom line, depending, of course, on just how much money this film, specifically No Way Home, actually costs to make. Before going any further though, into this video, please make sure you smash that like button, lap that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification on, that way you know every time in a video or live stream goes live on the channel. All right, so Spider-Man No Way Home is set to come out this week. I've already got my ticket to go see it because it is a Sony film, and I have no issues giving money to a Sony production, at least at this point in time, especially since this, of course, is going to be the biggest news of the weekend. And as someone who breaks down the box office, it's, I think, very important to go see films, especially large, big-budget films like this, to be able to offer my own perspective on these various things. So, diving into this story, let's go ahead and first start off with exactly who owns or who is the one who is actually putting up the most money for this movie well turns out it's sony so if we actually go ahead and look into just even the wikipedia page it says who are the ones producing this film columbia pictures guess what as it says right there columbia pictures is a subsidiary of sony so sony of course is the top producer of this film. It is the production company putting forth the most money for this movie. You also have Marvel Studios mentioned because they are also putting forth some money for this film as well. The issue, of course, is that some people are trying to say, yeah, but this is a Marvel movie. This is a Marvel movie. This is an MCU film. And even though this is taking place within the MCU, meaning that it's connected to other films from the MCU properties, no one is denying that fact. To say that that means that this is going to be indicative of how well or how not well the MCU is doing or how well or not well Disney is doing is a little bit of a red herring because this is still very much a Sony product as I will get into in just a second. But as you can see, just as a reminder, Columbia is again a subsidiary of Sony, Marvel a subsidiary of Disney. What we don't have yet, as far as what is being reported, is we do not have an expected production budget for this movie. And the production budget is going to have a pretty big indicator or a pretty big say as to how much money Disney actually gets out of this product. And why do I say that? Because if we go back to this article from a while ago, we are reminded of the fact that when it comes to the deal that was made between Sony and Disney, First off, Disney was trying to ask for way too much. In fact, they were the ones asking to try and split this movie's profits 50-50. Sony said, screw you, that is absolutely not going to happen. And so what did they decide on instead? Instead, they decided that Marvel and Disney would receive 25% of the actual profits because they are going to be putting forth about 25% of the actual money for the film. So they put up 25% in financing, they receive 25% in return, and that makes a lot more sense. They do also still hold, as it says here, all merchandising rights, and so some will say, well, hey, that's got to be taken into account, right? Yes, absolutely it does. The issue, of course, is you go ahead and try and find how much actual net gain, net profit this studio will get from any of those sales, and I will gladly listen to it and gladly put it into my charts and gladly put it into my calculator, but until you can find an exact number for how much money they made off of Spider-Man specifically for this year, then the point is, in the end, quite moot when it comes to the film's specific financial success, and more importantly, how much financial success it actually means for a company like Disney, because I don't think anyone is going to deny that this film, Spider-Man No Way Home, is in a great position to make a pretty large sum of money. Probably will be the first and only billion dollar film of this year and likely will be one of the few billion dollar films in the years to come because of the state of the box office in general. So the question then is how much money did this film actually cost and therefore how much money is Disney likely to expect from this movie? Well, let's go ahead and look at some history here. So first off, 
Let's go to the first film in the new Spider-Man franchise. This is the one, of course, that starred Tony Stark, and so it was a very huge film, bringing in a lot of actors, a lot of characters, and one of the biggest, if not the largest star from the MCU to try and really bring it off of the ground, and that, of course, would have been Robert Downey Jr. When this film came out, the production budget for the film was around $175 million. And again, notice here, you had Columbia Pictures, Sony, Marvel producing as well. And again, you're having to understand that this is still a Sony product with help from Marvel and therefore help from Disney as well. But $175 million was the actual production budget for the film. Then we get to the sequel. Far From Home. This film this still did feature some MCU characters, but did not feature the likes of Iron Man, did not feature the likes of Robert Downey Jr., and so therefore, the production budget for this film was around $160 million, which makes a lot of sense, because not having a major star like Robert Downey Jr. means that you're not likely going to have to spend that much money on the actual production. So we don't have yet exactly how much No Way Home cost to make. And so it leaves us with the question, okay, what is the film's end result going to cost? And depending on that, how much money can Disney expect in return? Keep in mind that based on early estimates, and again, I will be doing a full breakdown of all the major studios and how much money they made or lost this year. Spoiler alert, most of the studios lost a crap ton of money this year. But based on the early estimates, based on pure Disney films, Disney lost around $400 plus million at the box office alone this year. Now, you can argue that it made that money up elsewhere, but if we're talking just about the box office, if we're talking just about the movies, they lost hundreds of millions of dollars. And so some might say, hey, wait a minute, Spider-Man No Way Home, that's the film that's going to bring it back, right? No. In fact, no, that, that that's not going to happen at all. And let me try and point out why. Let's go to some charting. I love doing some charting. Charting is a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and assume, right? Let's go on the safe side of this first. Let's assume Spider-Man No Way Home costs $150 million to actually make the film. All right. That's including 75% of that coming from Sony, 25% of that coming from Marvel. Okay. In total with marketing, typical marketing costs, it means the entire cost of the film would be around $225, $205 million, which would mean the break-even point for the film would be about $375 million. So once the film reaches $375 million, that is when the studios actually start to make net gain, net profits. All right, let's assume that the film does reach at least, at minimum, that billion-dollar mark, which it is expected to do. All right, that would mean that Sony would get about $375 million, or rather the entirety of the film would get about $375 million. Okay, if $375 million is the actual net gain, net profit for the movie... How much of that would Disney actually get? Well, they would get a whopping $93.7 million. Yes. So again, they, they, they are losing right now over $400 million, right? They've lost over $400 million at the box office this year. From this film alone, if this film did not cost as much as the other films in the Spider-Man franchise, and this film is likely to cost closer to $200 million, I would imagine because of just how big this film is going to be, especially with some of the rumors of some of the actors that are set to come back for it, Disney is only going to get around $93 million, assuming it gets to a billion and assuming that it costs only this much to make. All right, let's then go to the high end, right? So that's the conservative estimate. Let's go again now to say, let's say the film cost maybe $200 million instead. All right, let's say the budget is $200 million. All right, that would mean that the film would need to make $500 million in order to break even. Assuming it makes a billion dollars, that would mean that the entire net profit for the film would be around $300 million, which is easily the largest net gain net profit of any film in 2021. Here's the issue, though. Because of that higher production budget, that would mean Disney puts forth a bit more, which means that its return on investment is a lot less. So that means that this film is likely to get Disney somewhere between 75 and $100 million in actual net gain net profits because of their deal. That is not anywhere close to offsetting the over $400 million that that studio has lost this past year. So for anyone who's hanging their hat on Spider-Man No Way Home, that's going to be Disney's redemption. Everything's going to be made up by that. Even if Disney owned 100% of this film, even if Disney got 100% of the profits of this film, it still would not be enough to make up for the massive financial loss, let alone the fact that it gets only 25% of the actual profits of this film, whereas Sony gets 75% of those profits. 
So Sony is actually in a very good and a very strong position to be able to make a handy amount of money from this movie. Now, obviously, you could say looking ahead, you know, we talk about, oh, well, what about the merchandising and, and all the sales? Right? Obviously, you know, Spider-Man sales are going to be through the roof with all the different merchandising that will happen from this film, and that very well could be true. But until we can actually find actual metrics to be able to apply to this year specifically, it's hard to really say or argue that the actual studio itself will have made a net gain, net positive this year, let alone going back to the very beginning of the pandemic. Remember that when I talk about that negative $400 million, that's just for 2021. That is not including 2020. So this is not including films that were affected at the very beginning of the pandemic. Keep in mind, Onward, which was the first film affected by all of this, had a net loss of $200 million. So we're talking about a studio that, from the movie side of things, has been on a massive loss because of how much money they just waste on all of their products, the fact that people were locked down for a long time to not go see their films, and then the fact that they decided to do this Disney Plus model that did not result, that did not bring in any sense of massive gains or profits for their studio. In fact, they actually came in well underneath their expectations for their Disney Plus numbers. So where does that leave Disney? It leaves them in a very precarious financial situation. So... Hopefully this made sense for some people and hopefully the MCU Marvel stands finally start to understand why it is that you can't really call this film a Marvel film or an MCU film. It might be a film based in the MCU, but based on the financials alone, it is still very much a Sony movie. Again, only 25% of the profits are actually going to Disney because Disney's only putting up 25%. If you own 75% of a film, you, you own the film, and that is exactly what the situation is with Sony. They have 75% of the production value of this film, and so therefore it is a Sony film. Not to mention, they're the ones that are distributing the damn thing. So that means that they are likely going to be taking on a little bit more of the marketing cost in general. So you take all of these things into account, right? And obviously there could be a deal there with them splitting marketing costs too. But you took all these things into account. Prime billing is going to go to Sony, right? This is a Marvel film. Right? There's no denial of that because Marvel is involved in this project, just like you saw in the very beginning when Paramount was releasing a lot of these films and Marvel was co-financing those films as well. In this case, though, Sony, 75%, Disney, 25%, and it's because of that 25% that if this, if this film does reach the billion dollar mark, which a lot of people expect it to do, it means very little because this movie is not going to be a saving grace for Disney based on massive losses for the entire year. But anyway... What are your thoughts? Do you think that Spider-Man No Way Home is going to have cost, you know, $150 million, $200 million? Again, could cost even more than that. We'll have to wait for them to actually release the projected box office, uh, project. you know, not just the box office projections for the film, but also the actual production budget for the film as well. Let me know what you think the production budget is in the comment section below. Also, let me know what you think this film's end result and take is going to be and uh, just how much of a... Uh, how much crap Disney is going to be up a creek without a paddle. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If this video, smash that like button, laugh that fire button. It really does mean a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my December Patreon subscribe star and locals members, animation commentator, Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Dolores Ed, Dion, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to You Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Hannibal Grimm, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeff Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle 79, Laura, the Modern Major General story, Mike Jackson times four, Mitch Dunaway, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody, Mondo Spieler, On to June, Orange Chat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Menden, and Tina Bojan, and of course, the Empress of the Universe. Tina B, thank you very much for being my Patreon members. And for my subscribe star members, UAB Mad Dog, Max Mike Jackson, Storm Tracker, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, Stan Four, John B, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss, Slash, the new number two. 
J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me on Subscribestar and to my four members over on Locals.com. Kara Tharp, UAB Mad Dog, once again, Mike Jackson, Bifford a Hobbit, and Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me on Locals. And if you want to have your name shouted out at the end of every video and live stream, check out the top link in the video description below. It's called Willow or W.LO, Willow Link. It'll bring you to all of my social media platforms and also to all of the various other locations that you can support the channel. You can get access to things like giveaways where I do giveaways of 4K films, 4K steelbooks, digital codes, all kinds of stuff every single month. Also, also, there's a level where you get access to all of that, plus an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, where you also get to ask questions that we will answer on every episode of the podcast. And at the final level, you also have the ability, the chosen of Valhalla level, you have the ability to have all of that, plus in your first month, get a free t-shirt of your choice, any color sent anywhere in the world, and also you get to be featured once a month on the chosen of Valhalla live stream featured on the main channel. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description. You're all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.